Hey guys. So this is a Venom Gyre Assassin that I've leveled up and uh, I'll talk about kind of the future for this character in a bit. Um, but I'll just kind of talk about what I've got going on right now, the obvious upgrades that you can make, and some things that have felt good uh, for the current setup. Um, so right now I'm on Embalmer Mitts just because they give a they're a five link basically and uh, I've just held on to this temple modded chest for probably too long um, and I'm kinda hitting the point where I'm deciding to invest more currency in this or transition it to something else so right now I've just got a chest with life I've got my five link on embalmer mitts which gives some extra poison duration and chaos damage to attacks uh, the wasp nest is a really nice poison attack um, kind of starter weapon. Uh, ideally, you want to get the I think it's an elder mod that gives you like 60% 60% chance to deal 100% more damage with poison. Um, so that's a mod you can get on a uh, weapon, and then on besides that, you want like either added chaos damage, big fizz damage. Uh, attack speed obviously and um, crit and crit multi is always good because um, assassin scales uh, poison damage off of crits too um, besides that pretty basic I feel like I've gone through this spiel with everything where all my rings are pretty terrible it's just resist in life right now um, same with the belt, uh, chest is a bunch of life. I'm staying at 4100, which is relatively low. I think uh, if I switch over to Belly of the Beast, which is probably what I would get next if I decide like I want to play Venom Gyre Assassin, um, I'd probably buy a six link Belly of the Beast, and then and then that's my six link, and then there's a few other things I can put in um, make a three link plague bear setup uh, which I don't think I really have I'm just using it by itself um, but you want that with uh, empower and uh, I think increased AOE is probably the ideal for plague bear and it does a lot of work in this build um, and then uh, Herald of Agony and Malevolence are auras, but this potentially changes to a uh, Blasphemy Despair somewhere in here, but uh, I'm kind of looking at what I want to do. Uh, Vitality is really strong right now, so putting that in this setup somewhere will be good. Uh, Ancestral Protector is useful because it gives you attack speed. Um, you can put it with stuff, but really you're not too worried about its damage. You're more so just looking for the attack speed from it. Uh, we have a cast wind damage taken to Mortal Call. And uh, right now I have this flame wall randomly in here. And I leveled with it with Venom Gyre, which felt really good. Because um, as Assassin you're doing poison... Assassin gets 100% poison chance really easily with 40% on the Ascendancy, 20% uh, off Herald of Agony, and then the last 40% uh, comes pretty easily on the tree. And then if, if you get something like Wash Nest, you get 20% there too. But the last 40% is really easy to pick up. Um, where if you're doing the same thing as Ranger, you don't get the 40% from Ascendancy, so you might have to just be more a little more conscious about making sure you get the full 100%. Uh, so, I guess now for the pieces of gear that are uh, part of the build, I mentioned Belly of the Beast is probably next here, the claw upgrade you can make, but the Wasp Mask is pretty comparable to um, anything besides like a good high-end uh, claw. So Starconjas is just a generally good thing. 
uh, I got really lucky and hit um, Plague Bear buff or Plague Bear enchant on it when I ran my uh, Merciless Lab. So, um, yeah, like that was crazy. But it gives us our life, it gives us crit chance, attack speed, um, helps get us decks, which isn't that big a deal. But so it's it's good. It could probably sit in the build. Um, potentially, like I always like the rare um, helm with the percent physical damage taken as an element. Uh, just any physical reduction that you can get on uh, either Shadow or or well, Trickstore Assassin are really nice because you don't have easy access to endurance charges or much physical reduction in general. Your armor is usually pretty low, so um, to me that would be the alternative here. Um, you could also get the enemies have negative chaos resist, which is more damage, but I don't know if that's entirely needed. Um, Mistwall is something that I saw a few builds using and wasn't entirely uh, convinced on, but I think after using it, the the maximum chance to block if you haven't been hit recently on a ranged build specifically feels really good. Um, again, like it, any fizz reduction stuff you can get is really nice, and then it also gives you the chance to avoid elemental damage, so some elemental mitigation in a sense. And then the phasing, if you've blocked recently, uh, generally doesn't come up too much. But since we're using Voidwalker, we get phasing if we've killed. So usually that um, that chance to void elemental damage is on. And then so coming down to Voidwalker, we're looking at ways to get Pierce. And you could use Thread of Hope on the tree near the acrobatic section to get that pierce node for relatively few points um, while picking up some other stuff too. I'll probably point it out later. But this gives you the projectiles pierce five targets while you're phasing, which uh, which is just great. Um, like you want to just be throwing out as many blades as you can and the five target pierce basically lets them go through everything. Um, and then phasing if you killed recently, which is almost always uh, on bosses. You don't have it, but you don't really need it at that point. And then chance to avoid projectiles while phasing. So again, just another little layer of uh, mitigation or avoidance. Um, so we've kind of got these stacking layers of avoidance here with 20% uh, chance to avoid projectiles, 13 chance to avoid elemental damage, and then max block chance. Um, which you'll see it flip up and down. Oh, I'm still on 63 fire. I wish I could record one video where I actually cap my resist before I uh, record and feel like an idiot. But anyways, I feel like that's probably trivial to you guys. You can cap your resist easily. Um, so yeah, all that to say, I think I would move with these in endgame. I really like the this combination of Miss Wall and Voidwalker. Um, I think Snake Bites could be good enough. Um, and Balmer is not really necessary unless you need, unless you have like a second skill that you want the five link on. Otherwise just your your main six link is going to be enough. Uh, End end game would be uh, a Senath's. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but a Senath's gentle touch. But I think those are like 15 exalts right now, or something ridiculous. But uh, that's just easily the best gloves for this build. Um, but uh, on a budget, one of these two or some other just life and resist gloves is going to do just fine. Uh, like I mentioned, if you can craft like endurance charges on your rings uh, or amulet, minimum endurance charges, that's uh, just going to help your survivability. Um, 
I actually might not mention that, but that that's something that I really like. Uh, just again because we don't have easy access to endurance charges, so I like the idea of that. Um, so yeah, I mean basic poison build. Uh, we're just using Venom Gyre, and the only unique mechanic is we want Pierce. Uh, we use Greater Multi Proj, which is common. And uh, Whirling Blades lets us shoot out our our blades after we catch them. So we catch them, they spin around us until we have 30. And then if you Whirling Blades, they get launched around. So that's probably what drew me to the build in the beginning. Because often while mapping, you're throwing them, you catch them as you run forward, and then you kill other stuff as you throw them. Um, so, on to the passive tree. Uh, I finally got my last trial, so on this guy I just haven't run it yet, but it's going to be Ambush and Assassinate. Uh, crits have Cooling Strike is really nice, uh, and then your first uh, hit on things has increased Crit Multi, uh, but that's, that's mostly it. I think the biggest thing is the Cooling Strike. There, I think there's an argument for Opportunistic. Uh, and maybe if you're looking just at mapping, opportunistic might be better um, with the extra movement speed and the more damage for a rare unique enemy. But I don't know. I, I think the coaling is. I've just liked it too much in the past. Uh, so a lot of this is pretty normal for poison stuff. We're grabbing this attack speed here instead of the chaos damage. Again, we want to be throwing just as many blades. Uh, if you're doing like kinetic blast, power siphon, poison, you're probably doing the same. Like you want more hits, more poisons, more than a little more damage on the poisons you you are hitting. Uh, so I've grabbed life wills. You can see I tried to fill out a little more of the life than what be what would be normal at this level. Um, but big things. Let's see, so we're doing acrobatics. Um, that's one of the big ones. Uh, this, on top of those other kind of evasion layers that we have, feels good. Um, it's, I, I mean, of course, with any evasion build, you'll like randomly die to one-shots. One like, it'll get past all your layers and kill you. Um, but that's just part of playing an evasion build. Um, doing claws so we have all the claw stuff here we pick up the stuff with crit multiplier because assassin um, poisons deal more with crits so we still want to scale crit and crit multiplier but we're not committing to too, too much so we leave some stuff off like that one we've left off this but we're still picking up uh, like we're still going for these which largely is crit and crit multiplier stuff over here. Um, likewise, these give a huge damage over time multiplier for crits, so these are worth the five points. Um, having all four of these was kind of weird, uh, and I haven't seen many people get all four of them. Usually it's like you get these three for damage over time, and then people will throw the two points for sleight of hand because it gives really nice attack speed. But I was playing around in POB with these two points, and it looked like it's more damage than almost any other two points. So I just dropped them in there. Um, I mean, you're not going to tell too much of a difference. And maybe those go towards like health or something more defensive later, but they're there. And they may be ones that are looking a little weird to people. Um. The claw nodes are really, if you're going poison, the claw nodes are really good. Um, these ones are really nice and give the damage over time multiplier. This uh, plays really well with using, I mean, for any build, you're going to be using movement skills. Um, but 15% attack speed is is massive. Like, just looking at this, this one node. Um, and it's potentially worth anointing if you're using claws and... Uh, like some movement attack skill like flicker strike or charge dash um, 
because it's 25% damage and 15% attack speed if you've used a movement skill recently, which is pretty much always, and increased melee strike range. So it's it's great in general. Uh, poison multiplier, poison multiplier. Uh, we need some accuracy. I think even now we're not at 100%. Yeah, we're at 98, so we need uh, something else even to bump up our accuracy. Um, but that's pretty much it. We're just picking up like all the random and that life stuff. Uh, grab all the poison multiplier we can, and a few defensive things. Um, uh, at some point, I should grab this. I think I haven't checked POB recently on this build, but basically, um, what I saw someone else say to do for a perfect agony and when you want it is just every once in a while you can paste your build into POE, um, like export it in there, and then check and uncheck this and see if it bumps up your DPS. If it does, then throw the point in. And so I think now I should be there. I wasn't when I checked it at level 73, but now I probably am. Um, so that's coming in soon. Uh, I'm gonna point out this point because a lot of times you stop at Soul Raker, but this gives you the chance to blind on crit, which is really nice, especially because Venom Gyre is piercing and hitting everything. So. And our crit chance is fairly good, so we get to blind uh, like all packs for the most part. So between that, our dodge and avoidance slayers, um, it feels relatively tanky for being 4,000 life. I mean, it's definitely not crazy, but it feels pretty good. Uh, let's go for this. Let's throw these down. Uh, all right, so this should all be fine. Uh, maybe I won't do this just because uh, Betrayal has a lot of one-shots, so if we are dying in one big hit to stuff, it's often Betrayal type of things. Um, so this is a Tier 9 map, uh, and you'll see kind of some of my hesitations on sticking with Venom Gyre. But the damage, and obviously I'm on a 5 link still, but the damage doesn't feel like super crazy. And especially if you haven't done a poison build, I haven't done overly many. Uh, it's just like stuff doesn't die overly quick. And you can see my life uh, will dip a little bit sometimes, but between the the lifesteal that I have from like just Soul Raker and whatever, and uh, and just the defensive layers, I mostly jump back up. So that that's where it's felt pretty tanky. Uh, Immortal Call also like helps stop any one shots that are going on, or like big burst of damage. Oh, the doors. Uh, mana is one thing that I've played Trickster so many times that uh, I forget that mana's a problem for some builds. But I, I have mana leech, so really uh, the only problem is if I throw a bunch and don't hit things, then then I end up out of mana. But yeah, it, if you're watching my health bar, I, I'll catch it every once in a while. But some of these uh, big volleys of attacks will drop me to like a fourth or ten percent of my health, and so uh, I I definitely need to get some more health, especially if I want to push this into red maps at all. Um, but I'm still surprised that with 4,000 health that I am not dying very much. Uh, 
because for a lot of builds that I've played at 4,000 health, you just feel very squishy, unless you're, unless you're a build that, like, just kills everything in one shot, like the 10 million DPS type of builds will kind of not have to worry about their little bit lower life because they're killing stuff quick enough. The other thing with poison is, uh, I don't know when to stop attacking things. Like, I could probably stop attacking things once they're at half health and just let them go. But, um, still feels, feels weird to me. If you haven't played poison builds, uh, Plague Bear probably isn't something you've ever thought about or are really conscious of. Um, it's an interesting mechanic. Basically, you'll while it's at zero, like while it's incubating, you'll deal less damage. I think it's 20% less poison damage, which uh, isn't a huge deal most of the time since you're putting so many poisons on things. Uh, and since you're mostly hitting like small units, uh, sorry. So, so it builds up, and then you hit this maximum amount. And once it's at the maximum, you stop dealing less damage, and then you can activate it again to uh, to start infecting. And it's that large green circle that's around my character right now. Oh, I need to pay attention to mechanics. Uh, but so when that's going, you're dealing increased dam or you're dealing damage over time to everything around you. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, so just watching that, you can probably see kind of some of the hesitations I have. Um, one, I'm killing stuff slower. Two, I'm just not overly tanky. And both of those problems can get solved with more currency. I think it can get to a point where it uh, is killing stuff quickly enough with poison where it doesn't feel as slow. Um, and we can also hit a point where we're a little more tanky. Uh, I mean, on the tree, I've hit most of the life that's available available to me. So most I'm getting more damage um, now, uh, unless you count the jewels as being a little bit of life too. Um, I, I have like four points of jewel sockets to spend. Uh, and then once you get an upgraded claw with the that poison mod on it, it'll it'll bump up the DPS by like tw I don't know a handful, twenty percent at least, um, and hitting the six link. So with currency, uh, the problems I'm running into get solved basically. But just wanted to share kind of my feeling on it, and just from feedback from others, it seems like. Uh, Cobra Lash is generally better than Venom Gyre, and I imagine it's because you get to do greater multi-proj, and you get the little chaining effect of Cobra Lash. Um, the other option that I was looking at is Pestilence Strike, and like I said, I tried Pestilence Strike, and I really liked it. It's one of the only skills that lets you uh, care about your total poison damage, where normally you just care about your poison DPS, it makes it so the total poison damage that an enemy's taking will get transferred, or I think it's like half of it gets transferred to nearby enemies once that one dies. So it creates this spreading, um, spreading effect uh, based on how much poison damage is left on enemies. So that kind of solves my problem of me standing there attacking guys too long, because if you stand and attack the same guy, it builds up more poisons and then transfers that to that enemies and then they die quicker. Uh, the changes there is you kind of need to use Binos or Binos uh, Dagger for Poison Prolif 
if you're doing assassin instead of ranger and then you'll still want a dagger with that that poison mod that chance to deal more damage with poison so likely you're dropping the shield and dual wielding which uh, makes you a little less tanky but your damage is going to be better in general um, so that's one option the other option is switch to a wand and just do power siphon kinetic blast because those two skills are just in a really good spot right now and they're really good at applying poisons um, so th those are kind of the options uh, if anyone's interested let me know uh, because if people if, if you guys want to see Venom Gyre I know it's a less pop, uh, popular skill like I'll throw the currency into a uh, getting the six link chest and getting the better claw um, maybe not getting the, the gentle touch gloves because those are a little bit out of my budget range but I, I could definitely get like a six link and a, a workable claw maybe not like the top tier claw but something that I could get into red maps with um, and then fix up my accessories and get my fire resisted cap um, and it's, it's, I mean, if people watched my videos, this would be a meme, just how disgusting my flasks are. But, so, yeah, any feedback, just let me know. Um, I'm kind of at that weird point where, where most leagues I would just pick one character, throw all my currency at that one character, and then get him to, like, level 90-something, 90, 90, 90 to 94 uh, to where it could start farming like currency well and then I would start a second character where this league I feel like I'm doing this weird backwards approach of uh, level of character to like 70 hit maps to where I could start farming something and then just start leveling another character and partly it's because I want to um, I don't know almost cheat on these videos to try to have more characters to play um, but I don't know it just also allows me to just try more builds because um, there's been a lot of builds I've had like on the back burner for ages and again because I only play one or two builds a league normally um, doing it this way lets me touch a lot more skills or a lot more uh, builds and like level with them so so it's been fun. Like I've enjoyed doing it this way. It's just weird currency wise of like, all right, now I've got three or four characters. Who am I spending the four exalts on? Um, if I was smart, I'd probably just throw it all at my firewall character, um, push him into red maps more, and and just farm currency with him. But again, I'm just trying to trying to touch more stuff so this is where it is uh, so yeah it <laughs> the broken record but yeah any feedback uh, let me know and I'll try to make it happen um, someone I think his name was Josh uh, commented on the other charge dash video and asked if it would work as an inquisitor and it seems good. I feel like I'm in this rut of only playing shadows, um, trickster or assassin, really. So uh, I'm I'm tempted to try it. I might. I was messing around with POB with it and got the damage to almost double the trickster's damage. The only big downside is you have to spend mana uh, on charge dash, but that's pretty easily negated with the craft on rings and just having any sort of mana leech. So, so that, that might be the next character. Um, if you watched the stream earlier a little bit, I'm leveling that character I want to use for use Flicker Strike with uh, on the Trickster because they get free movement skills. Um, so, those are kind of all potential options. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been fun. So, let me know uh, 
and if you would rather me do videos in a different way or focus on a specific character um, if you really like charge dash and that's all you want to see and you don't want to see me messing around with venom gyre random stuff then uh tell me too because i i'd gladly play charge dash up into late red maps and such and get that build like actually moving but anyways thanks guys and i'll catch you later peace